Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I will be chatting about all the logistical aspects of my Zanzibar trip. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do that and also click that notification bell in order to be notified whenever I post new videos. So for those of you who haven't as yet, please also watch Zanzibar vlog 1 and 2. Otherwise you can just watch this one. It's fine. <laughs> um, so let me jump right into all the costs involved and where I booked my trip, the agency and all of that jazz in order to make your trip when you are planning it, if you are planning to go, um, nice and smooth. So yeah, let's jump right into it. Okay, so the agency. Last time I went to Bali, I didn't go through an agency. I booked everything myself, but this time around, I also wasn't really sure how everything's gonna go with the COVID situation. So I wanted to go through an agency and I used Red Holidays. They were super amazing, really professional, and my direct contact person was Wujdan. Um, I contacted her and she sorted me out. So for any of you guys who are planning to contact Red Holidays, please, when you are contacting Wujdan or anybody else, they please let them know that you found out about them or heard about them or inspired to book your trip after seeing my content after seeing my channel and this video you can just give them my name this how as a reference this is just so that they can also keep track and see the traffic that i'm bringing to their business and then in future i could potentially collaborate with them on a trip uh, maybe a group trip <laughs> or just maybe a solo trip if i plan to go so It'll really be absolutely great if you could do that. I'd really, really appreciate it. So my trip came to around about 21,500 rand, 22,000 rand around there. Um, that was for everything, the COVID tests, the um, extra tour that I booked when I was in Zanzibar, uh, tipping money for the people there, the actual package that I paid um, at the Red Holidays, but obviously all of this is very dependent on the hotel you end up booking at, the time of the year you end up booking at because we went off season um, and now it's getting progressively more expensive because it's like the main season coming up now. So what I would suggest is that you check out the different hotels in Zanzibar, like you can Google, it's very easy to do. And then you can kind of see like what you're looking for. You can ask which Dan or anyone at Red Holidays to kind of give you a quote for this specific hotel. That's how we kind of got a deal because we first actually saw a different hotel, got a quote for that. And then my sister and I found the deal and we were like, actually, this looks better. And we asked Red Holidays for a quote for a deal. It was slightly more expensive than the other one that we saw, but we were okay to pay a little bit more because it was so beautiful so you should do your own research on the exact hotel that you are keen to stay at and the vibe that you're looking for and then red holidays will send you your quote based on the season price um because obviously like i mentioned the price will change based on the season you go so red holidays also advise that we book travel insurance but we actually forgot um, we literally remembered mid holiday and we were like shit we didn't do that <laughs> um, so that might increase your amount a little bit more because I think travel insurance is like 2000 rand or something um, but you can choose not to do that but I think it's probably smarter to do that um, I just really completely set my mind I planned to do it and then I just didn't <laughs> but anyway I saved 2000 rand <laughs> so in the package it includes 7 nights accommodation all your meals your airport and hotel transfers um the flights and the flight taxes and the service fee and then it excludes like your travel insurance your hotel taxes because we did have to pay um i think it was what was it a dollar a day um to the hotel so at the end of your trip because we stayed there seven nights so i think we had to pay seven dollars per person um, so that's just an additional cost. I forgot about that. Um, and if you have to pay for any part of the visa expenses, your package doesn't include that. And then your COVID tests, 
they don't include that in this package but they do offer to sort out your COVID test when you're in Zanzibar for an additional fee. We paid 1650 for that and then 850 Rand in Cape Town in order to get the PCR test before we left. So I made sure that I got my test done in Cape Town on the Friday and then I left on the Sunday because the test needs to be valid within like that 48 hours before you leaving if that makes sense. Yeah, so that's basically the costs for that. I will now chat about the airlines that we used and the flights that we had to do. We had to go from Cape Town to Johannesburg, from Johannesburg to Nairobi, from Nairobi to Zanzibar. So we took three flights. The Joe Book flight we organized ourselves, so we used um, Kolula and then went to Joburg. So the flights from Johannesburg all the way to Zanzibar was via Precision Air and yeah it was pretty okay there was food on the flight um on the five hour flight but no food on the one and a half hour flight from nairobi to zanzibar there was just like nuts that they give you and juice a little heads up we literally almost missed our flight um from johannesburg to nairobi because everything's a little bit more delayed with covid we got to the airport two hours before our flight and we still almost missed our flight. So just be extra careful that you go at least like three hours before because with COVID, I think the lines are extra long and there's extra checking and stuff. So yeah, that was a big thing that just caused too much stress and you don't want the stress that we had on the flight to Nairobi. It was just too much. Anyway, moving along. Okay, so Zanzibar what I did for my trip in order to plan like my content and everything was I checked where I wanted to go beforehand so I knew I wanted to go to the turtle aquarium I knew I wanted to do like a snorkeling and seeing the dolphins kind of tour but I didn't want to pay for that in advance so I booked that when I was there the turtle sanctuary which is like a big favorite from everyone that was 20,000 Zanzibar money, um, which is I think like $10, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure, but it was 20,000 Zanzibar money, um, which isn't expensive. And yeah, we ended up getting a tour guide. Haji was our tour guide and he took us snorkeling and to some of the dolphins or attempt to some of the dolphins um, and then he took us to the turtle aquarium afterwards. He's really affordable. We did scout around and we were on the island but he was the most affordable out of everybody and we also got lunch included in our meal. Um, everything came to, what was it? $200 for the three of us. Um, and then we just added some extra money for tip because that's kind of like a a thing that you do in Zanzibar, you tip the people. Um, but $200 for all three and a lunch for all three, I think that's really, like it was super affordable. So I'll put Haji's details down below in this box if you are interested in using his services when you are in Zanzibar. Okay, next up, let's chat about choosing your hotel. So I had different options. I literally googled um, hotels, five-star hotels in Zanzibar and then I went through the different prices and some were so beautiful but were way too expensive and then others just wouldn't my vibe. Like yeah, I went through quite a bit so I would suggest that you also do your research and see what's your style. Um, we were on one of the best beaches. Even the locals said that Nungui Beach is one of the best beaches um the beaches have really nice white sand and really light and bright blue uh, waters and the ocean is so nice and warm um my sister she said when she went on honeymoon she stayed on the other side and she said that beaches were quite muddy so i really was very happy that we went to Nungui beach um, and stayed there so when you are in zanzibar most of your trip will be on your specific resort and that's why i think it is worth it to do your research and choose a really nice place that will suit you and your 
five because you're gonna be in your resort for most of the time um, apart from when you do like your tours outside or whatever so the only medication i really took for this trip was the malaria tablets and i took the mosey tick tablets and i took this once a day i took it at night and you have to take it for 15 days so you have to start i think two days before you leave two or three days and then continue taking it right after you've left so i'm still taking it i think i have two left yeah i have two left i don't think that like malaria that prevalent um in zanzibar it's more in certain areas of tanzania but we took it just to be safe and yeah i didn't really have any side effects so i'd recommend it it is a bit pricey oh i forgot this makes my amount a little bit more um because this was 600 yen <laughs> between 400 yen and 600 yen this tablets were around that price and i remember thinking yo that's so expensive so that makes my trip now like just over 22k oh yes money so i just activated my card so that i could use it when i was in zanzibar um and then when i needed money i just withdrew from the atm directly i know she got she got dollars at the airport um i think she exchanged like three thousand dollars three thousand yen's worth of dollars um and yeah like you can use your dollars if you're buying stuff there um like gifts you can use your dollars if you want to exchange it into the zanzibar money i think it's shilling i don't know i'm probably talking nonsense i can't remember the <laughs> the currency there um but yeah you can tip in dollars you can use dollars when you're buying stuff and also if you're gonna buy anything at the airport then that money would be probably useful for you yeah that's about it guys just make sure that you have enough masks with you because you do need to like wear your masks and stuff um in zanzibar they very very lax about wearing masks like people there say they don't have covid <laughs> they say the whole of zanzibar does not have covid um so you can just be on the safer side and bring your masks with anyway and um wear it especially when you are going to be around like a lot of people luckily we went when there was a time when it wasn't actually that many people at the resort like i'm sure it's way more full at other times of the year like now leading up to their actual busy season um so a lot of the times there were very few people around so we could you know be a bit more lax but i would still be safe within saudi like when we went to stone town we tried to wear it so activities that you can do when you're in zanzibar i didn't want to do that many things but there are many things that you can do um there's obviously your swimming with the dolphins there's your nemba island uh we can go snorkel which is what we did you can go to the tortoise island which is called what was it called prison island i really wanted to do that but we didn't have the time for that apparently there's like really huge to tortoises um there's the turtle aquariums that's there there are other cool like experiences on the water like activities that you can pay for um if it's not included in your hotel that you want to do and oh there was actually like a full moon party that was there so i guess if you are keen you can just find out where the parties are at so if you are into partying and the party scene there are parties happening quite often in zanzibar you just need to ask like the locals um like Umar at the Turtle Sanctuary actually told us that there was a party happening on the one night um, and then there was a big party like a huge party the full moon party on the Saturday night so there was lots of parties happening um, we were just being extra safe so we didn't want to risk it but I had FOMO so you can pay for that I'm sure you can just see how much the tickets are there but it's not too much um, and yeah there's things to do on the island it's very nice but obviously i think if you're going to go to zanzibar it's not like going to bali where 
you're gonna be exploring like a shitload of places and going to like a whole lot of different cafes and restaurants you're mostly gonna be like in your resort enjoying just living life you know like resting eating the food yeah it's just very very nice 10 out of 10 would recommend <laughs> Yeah, if you are looking to boost the content like I did um, for Instagram, I would suggest doing what I did, which was plan your trip beforehand. Um, and what I do is I save, like I have a whole like saved folder on my Instagram that I named Zanzibar. And I searched like the Zanzibar hashtags and clicked like the different locations and Zanzibar accounts to see the different places that people like pose at and the vibes that they have and then I created like kind of like a saved imagery where I tried to kind of get inspo for my own content and if I wanted to recreate anything I had the posts there like it's very smart I did that for Bali too and it worked out really well so yeah that's my little tips sharing of info I really hope this helped in some way I hope you guys are gonna all go and treat yourself because it was one of the best experiences and i'm so glad i did that because i missed traveling so much because of covid um and i really want to travel again somewhere else so <laughs> yeah if you are gonna go and use your holidays please use my name so that i could potentially um organize a trip with them <laughs> in future again but yeah I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!